Well, looks like you can now communicate with your plant and vice versa, all thanks to a new device invented by scientists from NTU. Well, this device sends electrical signals to and from plants. With the help of a smartphone transmitting electric pulses to it at a specific frequency, researchers successfully made a Venus flytrap close its leaves on demand in just over one second. The device also picks up electrical signals that can tell us if the plant is stressed. Scientists say this discovery could open doors to useful applications, such as early detection of diseases in crops, as well as plant-based robots that can pick up fragile objects. For more, we're joined by its lead researcher, Professor Chen Xiaodong. Good evening, Professor. We know that plants emit electrical signals to sense uh, and respond to their environment, but what inspired you to, to, to tap onto that uh, to create something that helps us communicate with them? Yeah, basically, in fact, my group did a lot of this kind of variable sensors for healthcare before. So when the government come out so called 30 by 30 plan, we think about how our development can be used for this kind of plant growth. So in order to do this one, we ensure our sensors will be non-invasive, will not destroy the plant growth. So that's why you know we start from material design and for the interface building up and also devices integration to really come out non-invasive approach to monitor the electrical potential change on the plant leaf. Now, Professor, you have specifically chosen, you know, to test this out with a Venus flytrap. And is it because it reacts better than the other plants? Um, yes or no. In fact, when we start this project, we are going to look for one plant. It's really kind of electrical response and also people can see it easily. So we know already for the Venus flytrap, fly it's kind of mechanical response. And the science behind why this kind of ropes close and can catch insect is because this kind of electrical signal communication within the plants. So that's why the first our job is really come out this kind of flow. electro and also device can really monitoring electrical signals in the plants. And then we use this kind of electrical, it can really communicate with plants and then stimulate this kind of lobe to close. It's more like a mechanical, mechanical approach. Professor Chen, what does it mean when a plant is stressed or alternatively relaxed? And, and does that differ between, you know, different plants? Well, in fact, so take example for our human body, we have ECG, the one approach to really measure the abnormal of heart status. So let's assumption the doctor really to see this abnormal of this electrical signals from the curve. Now similarly, for the plants, if we know this abnormal electrical response, then we can really know this is something the one plants under this kind of stress. Could be heat, could be chemical stress, or other kind of environmental stress. But of course, for different plants, in terms of the electrical signal, this kind of the signature will be different. So this is something what we are doing now, seeing how we can really build in correlation between the response with this kind of different stress. So just looking ahead, there are plans then in the future to turn this um, research, research into actual applications for farmers and others? Uh, of course, the answer is we want to really convert our this kind of discovery into this kind of uh, useful technology application in our daily life. But however, this is something a bit long way to go because we need to ensure our sense, colonists, individual sensors, it works under this kind of an abnormal condition, like really hot condition or very really cold condition, but devices can still work well. And also long-term stability. And also ensure our sensor attached on this kind of a leaf will not destroy the plant growth itself because, you know, plant need this kind of respiration. And we put a sensor on top. It's better not to change this kind of respiration and so on. And then individual sensor, in fact, is not enough. You need this kind of the networks to really connect all these kinds of sensors together, together in a network and have assistance and also have AI systems. You really can do this kind of data sorting and analyzing and feedback. All right, sounds like quite a lot of work ahead for you. Thanks very much, uh, Professor Chen Xiaodong from the NTU School of Material Science and Engineering.